Hey guys, this is Mike, and you're listening to Feeling Twisty. I'm really glad you're here. A number of weeks ago, I did an episode called Specifically General, in which I answered a question that I am asked often, should I be specific or general in my imagining? And like I said then, yes, you could be either one and be successful. But even when I'm being general, I'm still getting clear on what I want. For example, if I were to imagine um, or feel myself into the state of financial freedom, before I do that, I want to get clear on what that means to me. You know, I don't want to just say I'm financially free and not be able to get what I'm saying, not to be able to explain it to anybody else, but to know within me, what does that mean? And for me, sometimes I'll pretend I'm talking to somebody and just, and as if they ask me, well, what does that mean? What does financial freedom mean? And I'm answering them in my imagination. Well, it means this and this and this. Everybody's state, you know, my financial freedom could be completely different than what you mean by financial freedom. So I want to get very clear on what I want, even when it's a general state of consciousness. And that's what I'm talking about today, knowing what you really want. Paul in 1 Corinthians, uh, sorry, 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, he's saying that when he is seeing the world and thinking from what his senses tell him, what his five senses tell him, then he's wishy-washy. His answers go back and forth. It's yes and no. But when he goes within to the one within, the power and wisdom of God, the answer is always yes. Always yes. Whether when and here's the you know the flip of the coin though or the other side of the coin. It's always yes. It doesn't mean it's always going to be lovely because it's always answering whatever it is you're conscious of being. So you could be imagining some awful stuff and the answer is going to be yes. The I am within you will give you whatever you're imagining, whatever you're conscious of being, that's what you get. So I think it's very important to be very clear on what you want, to know what you want and not deviate from it. Don't settle or just make do. It's okay to, to be specific. It's okay to know what you want. I'm giving you an example from today. So, you know, you've heard and you've probably seen it. If you go into the store, shelves are empty. People are nuts, you know, buying toilet paper and water, hoarding. They're doing all this panic buying. So today, you know, I woke up this morning thinking, okay, it's Friday. I do not want to go to the grocery store this weekend. Uh, I wasn't panicked or worried. I just don't want to do that this weekend. I want to chill out. We've got some, I've got to, you know, do some yard work. I'm pretty sure Kim's got some jobs for me to do around here. And I just want to relax with the family and take it easy. So I don't want to go to the store this weekend. So what do I want? And I just came up with four things that I wanted. Chicken, and I wanted specifically a big pack, one of those huge packs of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And I wanted a, another box of trash bags, more uh, butt wipes, and rice. Those four things I wanted. Now, I know that this past week, those four things have been in short supply all week. Now, I could have you know, made my list of what I wanted and then started thinking, well, Okay, if they don't have rice, I can make do. We can do mashed potatoes. Oh, but they probably don't have mashed potatoes because they were out the other day too. You know, I could start negotiating with myself, coming down of, off of what I wanted, what I really wanted, and just deciding that I would just settle for what I can get. But I didn't. I didn't want to do that. Today, I wanted these four things. And I wanted specific ones. I wanted the specific chicken. I wanted the specific, I needed, well, I have to have the specific size trash bags. And, uh, of course, butt wipes are always good. They're always pleasant. And rice. We like our rice down here in South Louisiana. Uh, and they've all been out at different times this week. But I didn't settle. I didn't start negotiating with myself. I went to the store. First thing I, I go to is the meat section. And as I'm getting closer, the entire area that's supposed to have chicken in it is empty. Uh, except for chicken feet. 
and I don't want chicken feet. Not going to go there. <laughs> but as I got closer, I looked down into the bin where the chicken is supposed to be, and there was one of the huge packs of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Just one pack. Thank you. Grab that. Now I move on to the rice, the aisle with the rice. And as I'm walking into that aisle, I see every damn shelf is empty. I think there's a couple of packs of the, you know, the flavored rice mixes, like the Noors, uh, Mexican rice, and that kind of thing. I didn't want that. I wanted just my white rice. <laughs> but And I'm standing there. I had a silly grin on my, fa my face, and I'm sure I looked goofy with two people walking by. But I'm just standing there looking at these shelves. And I said, uh, mentally, I said, no, I want rice. And I left the aisle and went on to the trash bags. Get to the trash bag aisle, I see it's pretty bare. But then I look down, and there's one box of the trash bags I want. One box of 13 gallon size trash bags. Grab it. Thank you very much. Move on to the uh, wipes section where the all the butt wipes are. I get there and there's not just one. There's like three or four packs of wipes left on the shelf. Grabbed my pack of wipes. And then I'm heading back, back toward the area where the rice is. And as I'm walk, getting closer to the aisle, they're unloading a pallet of rice. And I grab two bags of rice and go check out. So, and that's not... Uh, in any way bragging or anything. I want to tell you this so you can see how it is okay to be specific and not settle. Even in times like this, you know, you might be thinking, well, everything's in short supply. We just need to take what we can get. No. Well, you can, sure. But why? Why settle when you can decide what you want, be clear on what you want, and do not accept what the facts of the world tell you. I didn't accept the bare shelves of rice. Now, when I'd first come there, there were no, there was no pallet of rice being unloaded. And I went about my business grabbing the other things. One pack of chicken left, one box of trash bags left, one of four packs of wipes left. And I come back and there's the rice. Now, I could have settled for it and just taken whatever, you know, taken the store brand shells and cheese instead of rice. And settled for the chicken feet instead of the chicken thighs. <laughs> and, you know, may do without trash bags. We can just, uh, we'll just use all these grocery store bags. You know, hang them on the, you ever do that? Out of trash bags and so you hang your grocery store plastic bags by the knob of one of your cabinets. And, all right, here's where the trash goes. We've done that. So I could have settled. I could have been vague about what I wanted. Well, I'm just going to go to the store and see what they have. I'll just take what they uh, what they have and you know, and that's what I would have gotten. My results, what I brought home from the grocery store would have reflected exactly what I imagined, what I settled for. And today, knowing that my imagining creates my reality, that what I am conscious of being and having is what I experience, even groceries, that I can have it, even in these times when things are supposedly in short supply. So I want to encourage you to know what you want and don't deviate from it. If it's something you truly want. Now, if you change your mind, fine. About whatever it is, if you change your mind, you are the only operant power in your life. The I am within me is the same I am within you. Individualized as you and as me. I change my mind often. But if it's something I know I want, I used to deviate and settle and just give in to whatever I could take. And maybe you have too. I want this, but I'll just take that. I want, I want to be healthy, but I'll just take having enough energy to get through the day. I want my family to be well-fed and healthy, eating good food. But we'll take the, you know, a cart full of frozen pizzas because that's all they have. Not knocking frozen pizza. I love, some of those cheap brands are pretty tasty. <laughs> but you, you get the idea, right? Don't settle. Don't just accept it. Don't imagine something wonderful and then take something less than what you imagined. 
don't do it. Refuse to do it. Refuse to accept it. In anything, not just groceries. You might be thinking, well, he's just talking about groceries. That's an easy one. That's easy to imagine. I've talked to a few people recently that say stuff like that. Oh, yeah, it's easy to imagine, you know, to get the stuff, little things I want, cup of coffee, maybe a good movie, groceries. It's all the same power. <laughs> it's all you. So whether I am imagining and being very specific on my grocery list, like today, or very specific on health or he healed or healing from a specific thing, it's okay to name what you want, claim it, stake your claim into it. Like in Mark eleven twenty four, it says, whatever you ask for in prayer, be believing you've received it and you will. And ask means to demand or claim. You're not begging. You're not saying, I want this, but you know, if you could, uh, if you don't mind, if it could just whatever, whatever you think is best, God, I'll just take that. Just, I just want to be happy. I, it doesn't matter how much money. I don't even need a good job. I just want to be happy. What the hell? Don't settle. It says it right there in that verse. Everything you need is in that verse. Demand what you want. Claim it. Stake your claim. Plant your flag in that land you're now occupying. This is mine. I claim it. And prayer means motion. Motion toward your wish. That Greek, it's a word made up of two Greek words, motion toward and to wish. It's all a movement within your imagination. So go within. What do I want? I want some damn chicken wings or chicken thighs. Claim it. <laughs> Move in imagination. You're deciding you want it. That is a movement in imagination. I didn't imagine a scene of me picking up all the groceries today. I didn't even imagine coming home with the bags happy and you're like, la, 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 look what I did. I didn't create a scene specific to that. I just made the decision, this is what I want and this is what I have. I'm coming home with these four things. That is an imaginal act. Like Neville says, this is all equally a dream, whether you're, your body's asleep or you're awake. We're always moving in imagination. So you can just decide that it's done. This is what I have. This is what I want. And this is what I'm going to get. Stake your claim. Don't settle for less than what you really want or less than who you really want to be. Certainly don't listen to anybody on what you should be, what you should experience, or if you have the qualifications. Anything is possible. Everything is possible. Even right now, when you're, there's news about the coronavirus. I think there's another name for it now, but I can't remember the name. It's got SARS in it. Dum dum dum. Uh, you know, or think about shortages and don't don't settle for that. You want your kids to have certain healthy foods. Decide that's what you're going to come home with. You want junk food? Great. Decide that's what you're going to come home with. You want your bills paid? Wonderful. Decide that it's done. You are constantly having these imaginal acts because your consciousness is your reality. So by just accepting your wish fulfilled, it's done. Unless you start second guessing yourself and doubting it. Doubt, God doubting itself is the one thing that'll stop God. That's the one the unforgivable sin. That's the only thing that could stop you manifesting the life you want is doubting it. What else can stop it other than your own belief or your own lack of belief? Or rather your belief in lack or your belief that you can't do it. So like Neville says, if I assume that it's done and make no effort to make it so, I am living by faith. By faith all things were made as we're told in Hebrews 11. It's by faith. So if I really believe the thing is done because I've imagined it done and believe in the reality of my imaginal act, well, then the lighter I treat it, the better. If I make a problem of it, it's the lack of faith. I'm almost confessing the absence of faith, but treat it lightly, in confidence, then it will. But if I make a problem, 
Well, then I make it a difficult thing. Let it be. Trust in your I amness. Decide what it is you want. If you imagine a scene implying your wish fulfilled, enter that scene. Experience it in your imagination as if it's happening right now, not next week. Whatever you want is yours. You're just not aware of it at the moment. There's nothing to create. It's already here. So your faith, like Neville says, is just loyalty to unseen reality. You just don't see it yet, but it's there. Shoot me an email. Tell me your stories. If you have something you want me to talk about on here, tell me that also. Feelingtwisty at gmail.com. I love you guys. This is Feeling Twisty.